On today's show, stories of art outdoors. We tag along with a Minnesota engineer turned artist. Her best work happens right in the backyard. The art of boat building, best expressed through the work of this guy and a modern and colorful approach to traditional wildlife art. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hey everybody, Laura Millie and I welcome you to today's episode. Up first, a few of our favorite stories all about art in the outdoors. We start in Shorewood, in a backyard where one artist has captured national attention. As my dad Ron Sherry reports, Mary Jo Hoffman captures the natural world. Jack, Jack, leave them alone. They, they're not afraid of him. They're molting right now, like a lot of birds do in August, leaving feathers everywhere. Every day, Mary Jo Hoffman heads out to her backyard in Shoreview, Minnesota, in search of treasure, a special kind of treasure. Come on, come on, baby, let's go for a walk. I call August the golden month because we're going to go into goldenrod and sunflowers. Orange and green is the colors right now. Mary Jo's treasure hunt isn't for silver and gold, but something just as valuable. It's the tail end of the orange daylilies and tiger lilies and stuff, so I might do orange and green today. She's seeking a subject in nature. These are just ending tiger lilies, so I'm gonna play with these today. To capture in a photo. Let's go inside. Come on, baby. Come on, sweetheart. I guess if still had a signature style, you it would be this flat lay with a white background and soft natural lighting. I always and only use natural lighting. Her project called Still Blog documents the natural world every day of the year. Project started 10 years ago when I had little kids and when I had a two-year-old puggle. This is Jack the puggle. <laughs> Jack, he's really the reason I started all this. Looked around and said, what could I do? And then because of the dog and having to walk him Every day, I thought, well, I'm gonna do nature. I'm gonna do photo of found nature every day. And that's just how it came to be. I thought of it as a, I thought of the project as a calendar year, so I started January 1st, 2012. And I'll just go to today. And that is 3,867 days. He's now 12, he's getting to be an old man. She's just willing to, to sort of build her life by these little things that she chooses to do every single day. And the fact that she's done this for 10 years, I think is really extraordinary. She is an, an engineer at heart, as well as an, as well as an artist. So she has, you know, she is two hearted in that way. So I have a graduate degree in aeronautics and astronautics from Stanford. And then I came back to Honeywell and worked there for 17 years in research, always in research. Yeah, I loved it, I absolutely loved it. Mostly I was surprised, but still. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I love doing it. Probably the biggest reward for me was that in order to find something every day to photograph, I have to be very aware, right? I have to be super attentive. Her attention to nature actually got her attention only been doing the blog for three months, I think, when they first called. The Martha Stewart came, sort of came out of nowhere, and that was a sort of mind-blowing, Where? how did this happen? Now Mary Jo's photos appear from book covers, 
to home decor lines at Target, to the walls of family resorts. I'm still in a little bit of disbelief that me on my kitchen floor, on a white poster board, after walking that neurotic puggle, I mean, you know, like that, that is something that people are finding beautiful. Still Blog continues to not only inspire designers, but her own family. I mean, it's obviously just like a pleasing, beautiful thing to see, you know, just like nature, whether it be extraordinary or completely normal, but presented in a, a more extraordinary way. It's just, it's beautiful to take in. Incrementalism or dailiness, whatever you want to call it, is super powerful. I mean, that's all I can say is it's unbelievable powerful to do a little something every day. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Star Bank, Crush City, and by Voyager Lodge and Houseboats. Vintage boats are nothing new here in Minnesota, but how they live on, nobody tells that story quite like Kevin Fitzke. Be warned, if you ever enter this building, you might just get stung. Once you get bit by the boat bog, you're, you're hooked. Kevin Fitzke got zapped long ago. The boat stuff was just always an interest of mine. I definitely eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff, you know. In a way above average wood shop, Kevin slowly takes months, years, even decades off of old boats, one small scrape at a time. Lots of, lots of old varnish here. His work really quite singular, all about sharing stories. It's been in Italy the whole, its whole life, so out on the salt water. In this case, the tale of an old wood boat well-traveled. This is a 1960 Riva, and the model name is Florida. Being all an original woodwork on it, it obviously has seen its better days, so we're gonna redo all the decks and the, the sides and the bottom. That's what Kevin does. He restores some of the fanciest weathered boats around. We'll be getting the original upholstery from Riva to make sure it's, it's done correctly and everything, so this will be as original looking as possible. A nine month project, the work of Kevin's old soul. I love the history of wood boats, so I try to spend a lot of my time that I'm not in the shop building stuff, researching it. <laughs> It's neat to be able to have the opportunities like this to kind of fix these old things up and make it so other people can enjoy it and see what they used to look like back, you know, from the factory or back in the day. Fact is, restoring old boats wasn't quite enough. So Kevin paddled up a new creek, you could say. You know, a lot of it is just kind of in awe. I would say most people would say it's way better in person just because you can see the character behind it. You can really see the grain of the wood. The paddle boards are just a really fun excuse to keep doing that. A means to an end which culminates here on quiet water. It's a just a hot rod of a boat. It's super fun to drive around, it's incredibly smooth on the water. This morning, this ride, proof that boat building stuff can sting. This particular plans that my boat is based off of was printed in the February issue of 1935's Motorboat Magazine. And so it gives you kind of an overview. This is the original plans for Bug Light. Yes, Kevin built the boat from scratch, literally from first board and first stainless steel screw. The name, well, you probably already figured that part out. 
So, you know, they all have a personality to them. They have, they have that character about them. I think you can really just see the, the physical soul between a wood boat compared to, you know, maybe a, a fiberglass or an aluminum boat. And in the process, Kevin protects the stories. That's just what makes it that cool factor. They just, they sound cool. There's, they ride completely different. It's just kind of that experience you have. It's just, you, you can't get that with anything else. Still ahead, a walk in the woods leads to a new age take on outdoor art. Closed captioning provided by Leech Lake Area Tourism. Up next, photojournalist Kyle Heidenreich documents the work of an outdoor artist who takes his outdoor art and brings it into the digital age. The cool thing about art is that there's so many different types of it. It's a wide variety and it's cool to see what people kind of put their definition on it. So today at Bauhaus is a holiday market for Small Business Saturday. Bauhaus has a bunch of local artists come here and sell their various crafts and goods. They got jewelry, they got prints, they got paintings. My type of art that I've always liked to express has been in painting. Outdoors has always been just kind of like a, a part of my life. I've always loved hiking. I've always loved just being outside and being away from everything. And it really doesn't feel like we're in Minneapolis right now. Tina, come on. So I never had a dog and it's been a blast. <laughs> She's got eyes that pierce like daggers. She just loves going and venturing around and checking out new things as much as I do. All the ducks and geese hanging out on the ice. <laughs> Canon EOS 70D. Way too big, but it's fun to play with. It's kind of get to hang out with the ducks. You can be right next to them. I don't really like put my photos anywhere. I just use them for inspiration. Once I started doing photography, I was like, this is awesome. I want to paint this. That's kind of my way of getting people to see my photography is through my paintings, which is kind of odd. I always like to start by just doing a light sketch. The unpredictable nature of watercolors was just so intriguing to me. So it requires a little more planning, placing water strategically. You're kind of committed once you, once you start, and then once you start, you're kind of just going. And then on the flip side, doing it in digital. I kind of wanted to create that watercolor look, but to be able to manipulate it digitally. So it was just kind of fun to relearn something that I already knew and then just kind of finding new ways to apply that. There's a time-lapse replay. It's always capturing the what you're doing on the canvas. You can watch me do my art. The possibilities are basically infinite. There's all the layers, eraser, here's the paintbrush, there's all different types of paintbrushes. It's, there's too many options, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Since I've been working digitally, my, my style has changed. The beauty 
of working digitally is the fact that you can get right within an image itself and get real fine with your details. And if I don't like where it's going, I can just delete the layer, <laughs> which is really convenient. cool to see someone make a connection with your piece that's completely different than why you made it. And seeing their expression and seeing how excited they get when I make those pieces and when I give it to them, is, it's been so much fun that I'm trying to figure out how I can do more of that. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Flow Docks and Lifts, Midwest Exteriors MN, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. You know, fishing has a different meaning for all of us. For some, it's the thrill of the catch. For others, it's all about making memories. For artist Ted Hansen, fishing brings joy through a kaleidoscope of colors. When there's a fish on the end of your line, hey, hey. most of us think, hmm, how big is it? You are too small. But when artist Ted Hansen lands a fish, his eyes see something else. See that iridescence right there? Like that is fascinating to me. My love of fish started when I was a kid. I grew up in southwestern Montana. And then when I moved to Minnesota, I didn't know how to fish for anything other, th other than trout. I had no idea how to catch a panfish. I, I didn't know how to rig up a bobber. I mean, I knew nothing. I had to sort of relearn how to fish when I moved to Minnesota for all of the different species here. Just the way that they shimmer. That's what I was trying to capture today in the studio. His fishing passion also renewed his artistic talents. Well, I've been an artist my whole life. When I was a kid, I was like, you know, the art kid. I started doing fish when I was in my late 20s when I caught a giant fish. I caught this big fish and I couldn't afford taxidermy. And a buddy was like, well, why don't you just paint one? And I was like, oh yeah, I guess I could do that. So I did. Today, Ted is a successful artist who enjoys taking a modern contemporary approach to a traditional wildlife subject. I'm an art teacher, so a lot of it is influenced by art history. I have done several of it where it's just a close-up of the scales. It allows you to look at it in a different way. Instead of like, oh, it's a fish, it's like you're seeing color and, and you know, form and texture instead of just, oh, it's a fish. His artistic technique is one secret to his success, and the other? You have to have a passion for the subject. If you're not really passionate about fish, you're gonna get bored of it eventually. I pick up any fish, I'll catch a tiny little like sunny, I'm like, oh, look at the colors of that, it's amazing. He also creates other fishy subjects. I'm gonna make an au naturel. It's got some deer hair on it, and it's got some buggy eyes, and bass aren't picky enough to care too much. Another artistic sideline, he's commissioned to paint trophy fish for other anglers. People want a painting, a fish on the wall for, for memory. I think for, with traditional taxidermy, it can be the same way. But I think the painting brings something different. There's something about it being on canvas that kind of changes it. Fishing and art go hand in hand, according to Ted. Why, you ask? Because I'm restless. With art, you, you're never quite finished with it. You get better all the time. Fishing is sort of the same way. You can always do new things. I see a lot of overlap in that. It's good for restless people, never bored. So many fish, so many paint strokes. Oh, the choices an angler must make. It's the dichotomy between fishing and painting. Like, I, I really want to paint fish, but I also want to fish, and usually the fishing wins out. As they say, all art is but an imitation of nature. Like when you look at a fish, like in person, and then you try to capture it in the studio, it's cool, but you never, you know, you can never quite get what, nature still reigns supreme as the ultimate artist. One cool thing about Ted and actually his wife, this past summer, they hiked the Continental Divide Trail. Wow. What a feat. 
That's a long one. <laughs> well, that about does it for us. We certainly hope to see you back here next week. In the meantime, remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.